Okay, welcome back to Berlin. We are playing uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall, and I just finished the like intro mission where everything goes wrong, like it often does in uh, <laughs> in Shadowrun. So we're gonna give uh, we're gonna spend Night's Ass's karma. We're gonna spend some karma for Night's Ass, and we're going to uh, we're gonna boost up her uh, rifling skill, I think. And then I've got one point that I can put into. I don't know, something... I don't know if it's worth, like, bumping up. I think I might just save it. Yeah, drone control, spell casting, adept powers, spirit navy, I don't know, fuck all that. I'm gonna just hang on to this karma. Okay. Aw, oh, little knight's ass. Alright, let's go talk to some people. Yeah, look at all these NPCs to talk to. Knights us. Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot. His expression, grim. Did you get the information about Green Winters? No. Green Winters is coming. Oh, what's up, Dietrich? Dietrich turns his head at your approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all this, there's still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Night's ass, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps that needs sharing. We've got a fallen comrade to drink to. You go ahead and toast Monica. I'm drinking to revenge. Fuck yeah. To revenge! As good a cause as any, I suppose. Drink away, then. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear. And as you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. It tastes of sweet corn and walnuts, with a lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig, then return the bottle to Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull on the bottle, then locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, Knight's ass. What made you choose to come to Berlin? Why do you want to know? Monica told me you moved here from the rhine ruhr Megaplex. Made it sound like you've been there a good many years. Successful years at that. Leads a man to wonder why you packed up and moved here. Here? <laughs> a member of my old crew betrayed me. I had to drop out of sight for a while. A run went bad and my team paid the price. It was time for a change, that's all. Hmm, how about... A run went bad and my team paid the price. <laughs> because of Crusher. Dietrich raised an eyebrow. Went bad, huh? Like the run we just came back from went bad? Worse, I was the only survivor. <laughs> That's rough, friend. How did it happen? Somebody clued our target into our arrival. They set a trap when we walked right into it. We were double-crossed. Run went off without a hitch, but instead of paying us, our client decided to set up an ambush. Yeah, this one. Miserable bastard. All right, if what you're telling me is true, how do you walk out alive? Yeah, backstory. Poor Crusher. My team fought like hell and we took the ambushers down, but we got all shut up and I was the only one who survived. Sorry to hear. Sounds like it was a glorious fight, though. So after all this went down, you decided to bail, bail out of the Ruhrplex and head to Berlin. Am I getting that right? Yeah, it's just, I'm just establishing Night's Ass. Alternate Universe Night's Ass is backstory. More or less, there wasn't much left for me in the Ruhrplex and Monica made me a hell of an offer. Ah, yes. Monica. Dietrich raises his bottle again and closes his eyes and takes a long drink. After the moment has passed, he returns his attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you, what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know you two knew each other way back, but she's pretty coy about these things. You always this inquisitive? Yeah, I suppose. My life's an open book, so I guess I just sort of figure everyone else's will be too. So how about it? Wanna fill me in? We were very close. Is that so? Dietrich raises an eyebrow. Huh. Learn something new every day. Well, anyway, good on you both. Dietrich raises his bottle to you in a salute. She was a wonderful woman, and I hope your time together was happy. And you have taken up most enough of your time, and the bottle's almost empty. I'm super drunk right now, okay? Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you're here with us. 
Dietrich takes a final pull from the bottle, then tips it forward. Pour an authority on the curb for his dead homie! Rest in peace, Monica. We miss you, girl. Yeah, Dietrich. Hey, who's this? Look at this dog. Look at hip hop. As you start toward the safe house door, a large, four legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerges as he enters the room. Ooh. Head hanging low. Oh shit, Dante. Dietrich shakes his head. Uh, don't worry, boy. We look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Amsel's eyes well up. He inhales but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown howl. Wouldn't stop. Kept. He closed his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. <laughs> Looking down into those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. <laughs> Grab Monica's bag of soy jerky treats off the table and give him one. Dante takes the treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. I guess the dog is going with you, Night's ass. Amsel takes a ragged breath and releases it. A slow, melancholy smile plays across his face. Well... Perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. That is not how it works. Return to the safe house when you've finished with Alto Gemeine Freunden. With a little luck, we can help locate Green Winters. We can get to the bottom of this. Spy dog. He stares at the floor. And now, I think we should all take a moment. His lips tighten. For Monica. Of all the souls I've ever known, hers was the most... Human... Ooh, equipment. I don't have any new stuff. A grenade, my gun, and an outfit. All right, I confirm. I confirm that's already have. Okay, I don't want to talk to Iger. She's such a jerk. Hey, Glory, let's talk to Glory. Just walk into the bathroom, whatever. Glory is beautiful in a wafer sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in their delicacy. Yeah, she's delicate. But there's something cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory's rocking a heavy load out of cyberware. From head to toe, she looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she is of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Glory's cyberware is first generation. All of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Night sass. Glory shifts her gaze to you, but her expression is as cool and placid as always. Cyber zombie, can I help you? I have a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind. I'm not big on sharing sport, personal reasons. You understand, I'm sure. The edge in her voice tells you she's not interested in continuing this conversation. Of course, we all have our secrets. But if you ever want to talk, I'm here. All right, it's cool. Let, let Glory have her secrets for now. Hey, Iger. Iger stares at you, and you can taste the bile in her stare. She still, she clearly still blames you for Monica's death, which happened like ten minutes ago. Something I can do for you, fearless leader. You're wrong about me, Iger, and I intend to prove that to you. I'm fucking awesome. She stares at you for a moment, then looks away. Best of luck with that night's ass. Now, please, leave me alone. As you wish. Okay, Boba Fett. What else we got? Anything good? Anything cool in here? No? Alright. Let's get out of this dump. We live in an abandoned train station like a bunch of chumps. Oh my god, look. It's a red. It's that. It's that motorbike from that motorbike movie. <laughs> Zendiger, yeah. Nur für Mitarbeiter. Okay, Germans. What does this say? Not for mom biting. <laughs> yeah, I know it's. I know it's Akira. The the joke is that 
never mind. <laughs> that Weed didn't know, or I think it was Weed. Somebody called it that motorcycle movie, and so now that's what it's become. Uh, employees only. Nur für Mitarbeiter. Employees only. All right. Look at all this cool stuff. Old timey junk. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Rhein Nugger Import Shop. Uh, environment. Look at this. It's snowing, and there's Germany. There's like a garbage can fire. Oh yeah, yeah. What? Why is? What is this? Glowing pot thing. Hey, Mallet Holier. Oh, what up, girl? Sweet haircut. The Dorvish tech vendor smiles at you with practiced ease, her almond eyes twinkling with the glare from a dozen vid screens. She speaks in a clipped, heavily accented German. Here we go. <clears throat> Welcome to the Data Haven. Can I help you with something? I need some tech and I'm on a tight schedule. Show me what you've got. Ooh, tech. Cyberdecks, drones, outfits, consumables. All right, so she just sells, like, decker crap. Get out of here with your nerd stuff. I'm out. This is boring. There's, so there's the cafe, but this is a role-playing game, and I can't, I totally can't just go to the first place right away. I gotta go explore. Oh, random dancing elf, of course. What's up? Dance, dancer's bag. I don't wanna... Tip the dancer. Hold me closer, German dancer. Gunari, what's his name? Gunari Mitbach. Right, Gunari. Gunari? The Romani Patriarch is an ooh, cool. Romani Patriarch is an impressive feature. An enormous man in his late sixties, burly and broad chested despite his age. His voice is deep and resonant. His breath is heavy with a stench of pipe tobacco. I don't know what a Romani accent sounds like. Taven Bakstale, you're here to conduct some business. If not, I welcome you to Metbach Arms and Ammunition. If not, keep right on walking. I have cash and I need weapons. Show me the goods. Oh yeah, smart links. I need a data jack. Yeah, look at all this rad shit. Holy yeah. Yeah, I need to get me a data jack. Where do I get that? Secure tech, armored clothing. Okay, well let's let's maybe start there, and then we'll buy some cyber crap later. Oh yeah, looking red. That is not very secure, but I look cool. Confirm. <laughs> I don't know what a oh Dracula accent. Oh okay. Welcome back. You need some weapons, some ammunition, perhaps. <laughs> All right. Medbach's face hardens. After a brief pause, he gives you a curt nod. Very well, guards you. But if you come around again, you will come with money and come to buy, understand? He makes a shooing motion with his hand. Move along now. Zadev Lesa. Hungarian, maybe? Okay. All right. I'll try. I'll work on it. Thanks for the subscription. Subscription. Welcome. Thank you for the subscription. Thanks, anybody's. <laughs> My ability to speak is getting all fucking garbled up. This game is ruining my brain. Alright, Zach Flash. This elf has clearly seen better days. His skin is weathered and emaciated, as though it had been stretched too tightly over his frame. Track marks line the crooks of his arms, and dirty bandages wrap his knuckles. Oh, break down, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> Despite all of this, he seems cheerful enough. <laughs> this seriously is its future breakdown. <laughs> the elf fixes his twinkling, bugged out eyes on yours. And offers a broad smile, displaying a set of impossibly white teeth. He speaks to you, his voice surprisingly deep. Guten Tag, mein Freund, and you're here for some magic because Zack Flash. He gestures at himself with a dramatic flourish. Is your magic man? Magic? Are you a street mage? No, it's drugs. He's selling drugs. 
Zack cocks his head and offers you a lopsided grin. Well then, I might be able to help you. He begins to twirl a strand of his long stringy hair around his spidery fingers. His smile remains fixed, a pearly crescent set into a fake, a fake, a face caked with grime. Don't leave me in suspense. What have you got? Oh, a little bit of everything. I've got your Zen and your Hyper, your Nitro and your Nova Coke. If you want it, I got it. Zack leans towards you and lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. I've even got a special concoction of my own design, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're serious about getting high. So, you want to conduct a little business? Show me what you've got. Show me your moves. Kamikaze, Flash, or Nitro? Uh, none of these are really good. Like, I don't need strength or willpower. Sorry, dude. I don't need your drugs. I would buy Flash, but I don't. It's too expensive. Too rich for my blood, buddy. Ooh, Triage Cyber Clinic. All right, let's go see how much I need to save up for Data Jack. You, just, you can't just bring your dog into the clinic. Dr. Xavier Izkabel. As you approach the elf, you notice he's in mid-conversation. His lips move rapidly, and his voice comes out a low, quiet tone. The glossy plastic shell of a high-grade comlink glints on his wrist. I'm going to listen in on his conversation. Doing your best to look uninterested. You lean in slightly and strain your ears. You find that you can make out the doctor's end of the conversation. No, no, the price I'm quoting you is more than fair. Well below market value, in fact. If you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know the price has gone up. This is a seller's market. Well then, you'll just have to find the money or go without. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have a patient. Boop. He presses a button on his comm link and looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to the triage cyber clinic. I am Dr. Xavier Ezkabel, and your name is? Nightsass. A pleasure. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Nightsass. What can I do for you today? I need cyberware. <laughs> all right. So it's all going to be way more expensive than I can afford. Uh, never mind, Data Jack. Well, let's do it. Smart Link weapon. Put it in your brain. Go. Go, Smart Link. Confirm. Oh, no. It causes essence loss. I don't care. Rad, rad, rad. Okay, now I can save up those badass guns. Okay, cool. Hot Kathy, let's continue. I Yeah, I'm totally going to continue the game. I'll play when I play Hong Kong. I'll play as Night's Ass 2, and we'll just we'll keep telling the, the sweet Night's Ass story. Simmy. Warming yourself in the dim light of a dying street lamp. I'm pretty sure these are LEDs and they don't give off heat, but whatever. The waif of a girl who looks far too worn for her years. The mother superior. She says there'll be seven for me to care for. I need to see to them. You're high as a kite, aren't you? We can fly kites. I should ask the mother superior. She says I'm to be governess to the children. She kind of looks like, um... The actress that plays, uh... Cersei Lannister. You notice a chip jack poking out between the, uh, beneath the young woman's unruly hair. The vacant look in her eyes marks her as an unlikely BTL junkie, lost between reality and any number of better-than-life virtual constructs. I need money to get back to them. This story sounds familiar. Captain Von Trapp is very well known and respected. She is, she's in the, <laughs> Lena Headley, that's right. She's right in the middle of a um, Sound of Music Beatle trip, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> Captain Von Trapp is very well known and respected. The poor dear lost his wife and the children their mother. A child should not be without a mother, and a mother should not be without a child. Have you seen the captain? I'm gonna step away now. Yes, good, I need to rejoin the children. The hills are alive with the sound of drug addicts. 
A bizarre monument towers before you. At the top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands, its outstretched wings looming over the small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold, Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. Yeah, Griffin, it's a piece of junk. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers to life. The grainy face of a smug young orc appears on screen. Press the one key. Statue name. Oh, yeah. Hello there. I'm Herbert Kunzel, creator of this monument. What would you like to know? Statue name. This is my tribute to victory. Just gonna do it again. Just go ahead and shut Griffin up there. There we go. <laughs> this is my tribute to victory, the victory of anarchy. It's both a citation and parody of the statue we destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it from the history trades as the Sigsaule or Goldels. Press the 2 key. Installation history. Isn't it obvious? The Sigisal, a monument to the hubris of the Prussian state, gets blown to bits. So someone takes a lot of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of anarchy. I mean, what more is there to say? Press the 3 key. About the artist. I am the visionary Herbert Kunzel from the Lindwürmer. You might know me from... Okay, well, there isn't much I'm known for yet. But I, this guy's totally wearing a black turtleneck. He's an orc with a black turtleneck. But I intend to change that. All art is born from misery, after all. Step away from the statue. Okay, Kunzel. Ring, ring. Ring a ding. You can tell that it's the cyberpunk future of the 80s because there's a, it's a, <laughs> there's a phone in a booth, in a metal booth outside. It's an old, obsolete phone... <laughs> okay, alright. An old, obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. Pick up the receiver. A monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The shock and the shock well and writer's contact for this Keats is no more. Nightsass is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to this Keats. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can find a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for sought-after information returned to this location. The line goes silent. Yeah, quest generator. All right, let's continue with the game. Shockwave Riders, Shockwellenreiter. Cool, all right, thank you. Playing games with an international audience, you get to learn things about languages. It is the best. All right, into the cafe. Okay, oh yeah, this is the, like, Hungarian dude. I'm not going to be able to pronounce anything that he has to say. Jan Goldschmidt. John Goldsmith. Jan Goldschmidt. Hello, my friend! The voice that comes from the man in the chair is as enormous as its owner. A deep, booming roar, dripping with unrestrained mirth. A fine day for a soy calf, Yes? Yes, it certainly is a beaut. From the back of the store, a voice of the shopkeep cuts you off. Don't mind the fool. Don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized walrus, stewing all day in his own sweat. The man behind the bar glares at Goldschmidt. His upper lip curled in disgust. I tolerate him only because he takes his soy calf by the bucket. Goldschmidt responds with a raucous belly laugh. Ha 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 ha! Apparently, he finds the shopkeeper's insults to be hilarious. Ah, I'll took mine frunden. You're as quick-witted and sharp-tongued as ever. I bow to you. If you wouldn't mind... Once again, the shopkeep cuts in. To bow to me, you'd first have to vacate your chair. The shopkeep clasps his hands together, clasping them in front of his chest. I shall summon a team of determined young men and an ox to assist with the task. 
With luck, you'll be on your feet by nightfall. Goldschmidt smiles up at you, small eyes glittering. <laughs> Enough of this senseless bickering. You've approached me for a reason, yes? Tell me, what can Jan Goldschmidt do for you? Something bad is going to happen if he doesn't stop interrupting me. Oh, don't mind our dear Aldug. Yes, he's a peevish man, but his ire was not directed at you. Goldschmidt grins up at you from his overstuffed chair. I have the distinction of being the sole target of Altug's rays and derision. It is a badge that I delight in wearing. Why did you put up with those insults? Don't you have any pride? I put up with them because they amuse me. The fact they amuse me infuriates my dear friend Altug, who in turn hurls more insults. And thus the cycle continues. In two years now, it's been two years now and I've been your customer. Yes, Altug? Two years of soy calf and strained patience, yes? And I remain happy, and Altug makes money. An ideal business relationship. That all sounds perfectly healthy. Take care, Jan. Goldschmidt gives you a deep nod, his jowls quivering. Until next time, my friend. Okay. How about you, Altug Burakazi? Altug Burakazi. The man behind the counter looks right past you, and the dog following close behind. Dante! I will fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Paul Amsel sends his regards. When he meets Amsel's name, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. Even more or less exaggerated than before when I wasn't even doing it. His eyes take on a knowing look. Ah, very good. Please express to Herr Amsel my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the future, I'm always happy to provide. Wow, I like how you can just be totally dumb. Catering? I don't follow. <laughs> Paul is always pleased to send business your way, Herr Burgazi. He was hoping you could discuss some of the details of his Green Winter's order with you, with me. The coffee shop owner offers you a smile. Of course, of course. Herr Amsel's too kind. Burgazi turns his head and calls to the back room. Kami, come. A young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Burgazi spits something out in rapid-fire Turkish. As you wish, uncle. I will see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back to the room she came from. My girl Kami is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. So will likely take time. The chef is a busy man. While we wait... I wonder if you'd be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. I'm embarrassed even to ask, but I would be most appreciative of your help. I'm not your errand girl. I do a job. I get paid. He smiles big, the Turkish vendor again. You are already being compensated, most masterful of mercenaries. Do you not recall Kami's fetching your information for you? Returning the favor would be a courteous thing to do. My time is a valuable commodity. I could be recording albums. I'm sure a businessman like you can understand that. Oh, yes, of course I can. Burak Ghazi rummages through his pockets and fishes out a crumpled hundred new yen bill. He thrusts the coffee-stained wad of paper into your hands. There. You have been paid. Now, let us get on with it, eh? Altuk's voice lowers to nearly a whisper. The errand is simple. Hardly worthy of you. I've installed a number of data taps to Berlin's fiber optic network. It's part of my civic duty, you understand. These taps provide free matrix access to all those who live in the Kreuzbazar. In order to maintain their... How do I say it? Their anonymity. Each tap's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each data tap and reset it. Simple enough. Yes. Yes. It is a simple job. Time-consuming and a bit tedious, perhaps, but simple. Just reset the taps and come back when you're finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one's just outside. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted atop it. By the time you return, I should have the information Herr Amsel requested. Yeah, it's going to be so hard, and I may not even try not uh, to include these characters sometime in Mirror Shades. Like, if they ever go to Berlin, I am mining the shit out of this for NPCs. And it won't be, like, the important ones, either. It'll be just, like, the bullshit nobodies. Um... 
definitely, definitely like people that know Night's Ass in uh, in Berlin. Yeah, I, I could I could very much see that happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that was one of them. Data taps checked. Got a little like run around mission. Where else? Where else? Data taps. What's up, Lane? Serial experiments, Lane? Oh, this guy's a food scientist. He makes breakfast food. Before you stands a troll. Though it is a stretch to say he's standing at all, his great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs. Oh, he's like leg crusher. Along with a crutch under one arm, his body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp, calculating. I know you. If you know Monica. Sure I know Monica. You one of hers, then? I'm Night Sass, by the way. Good to meet you, Night Sass. My name's Alexi Lane. Well, maybe he's Russian. Good to meet you, Night Sass. My name is Alexi Lane. Yeah. Good to meet you, Night Sass. My name is Alexi Lane. There we go. I think I got it. What do you do here, Mr. Lane? Ache and groan, mostly. And try not to be a bother. There's something you should know about Monica. Something happened to her on the run. How do you know? It was written all over your face. I hear the feeling, besides. Monica almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and now here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? Dead. The grizzled troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetics complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. Now that is a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. I'll leave you be. Is there an achievement for like telling all of her friends that she's dead? At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there's kindness in his eyes. Uh, hello, human. As you can see, I'm in the middle of a conversation with my assistant. The volunteer worker holds her silence, but her expression is full of naked hostility. Samuel gives her a sidelong glance, and she seems to get the message. The fire in her eyes dies down to a low simmer. But we do not want to be impolite. Is there something I can do for you? I can't help but overhearing your conversation. I take you around a charity of some sort? Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me specifics. <clears throat> In the past several years, I've established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of the Kreutzbazar to better themselves. It isn't much, but it's a start. A good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. Oh, you don't get a portrait. This is true. He nods to the orchid his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that have helped over the years have come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from around the Kreutz Bazaar working with me. They helped me man the soup lines, took the library shelves, and to do some of the hundreds of other little things the community organization needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here has value. They're my inspiration to continue forward. She beams at the compliment. From her body language, it's clear she idolizes Beckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. Fifteen assorted orcs and trolls, does that mean other races aren't welcome within your organization? Just taking a rather narrow view of what we do. Yes, it's true, my assistants are all members of the goblinoid races. It's also true before they... That was also true before they accepted my help. They were thieves, gangers, and deadbeats. It's not because they were bad people. This is because those of us with goblinoid traits are feared, mistreated, and denied gainful employment by a society that hates us. Shadowrun. I hire only goblinoids between main, because mainstream human society has created a need for me to hire only goblinoids. Pay attention to what this guy is saying. Everybody in chat, this is important. <laughs> this is how it works. The orcs and trolls of the Kreutzbazar deserve a workplace where they'll be treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our services are available to all. 
We would not turn a disparate person away, regardless of that person's metatype. Even humans, most privileged of all races, are welcome at our door. Isn't that what's most important? It is. I agree with what you're doing here. You're filling a vital need in the community. Thank you for saying so. Now, is there something else you'd like to talk about? I'd like to talk about your organization. Are you accepting donations? Yes, of course, we're actually desperate for them, truth be told. People seem more intent on taking care of themselves than they are providing for the less fortunate. Of course, these concepts are not unrelated. As poverty rates increase, so does the crime rate. Assisting the needy increases the quality of life for all. In any event, our shelters had some basic needs that desperately need to be filled. The walls of the shelter are not insulated, and new blankets would go a long way towards keeping our guests healthy and comfortable. Ideally, we'd like to purchase some space heaters as well. For 250 new yen, we could make the purchase. Wh whatever you could spare would be most appreciated. Hells yeah, dog, take 100 new yen. Boom! I just made this money. I'm in the middle of a mission. There you go. <sighs> a fine donation. This will do a great deal of good. Thank you. You're welcome, Sam. Think nothing of it. Yeah, with this contribution, we have 100 saved. Well, I'll come back when I have more money. I bought armor, so. Sorry, man. Let's continue on my quest. Time to go on a quest. <laughs> yeah, we're not really playing Knight's Ass True to Form because I, I want to like play this game and do things that are fun. Um, also, if I was playing Knight's Ass True to Form, I'd have a lot more options than I do around how famous I am. But if I ever get options to, to like, you know, talk about how famous I am or be arrogant about how people should know me, I, I will try to take them. Alright, where's these data taps? I gotta find more taps. Oh, this mission is tedious. I'm feeling tapped out. There's one. Boop. <laughs> Get out of here. That's a barricade. Oh yeah, has Steven revealed where he works yet? That was happening today, right? Do I have a, uh, do I have like a map of this area? I don't think that I do. Oh, where's my mini map? This is bogus. Bottom right corner. Okay, thank you. Oh, who's this guy? David. David Seraf? Night's ass. Oh, hi, Night's ass. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, kid. Uh, she's dead. The kid blinks, a blank expression on his face. It's horrible. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> the kid swallows hard. Under the shadow of his hood, you can see the colors drain from his face. Look, I think I want to be alone right now. <laughs> Aw. That's exactly what Knights has to do. There was blood everywhere. Oh, top right. I'm being misled, huh? By the clinic, the cyber clinic? Okay. Yeah, that was a very nice ass response. <laughs> Ran past it at the cyber doctor. There it is! Boom! Yeah, nice ass. As you're resetting the data tape, you notice someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. Yeah, I'm gonna take a random earplug and jam it in my ear. I just found it outside, no problem. Gross. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices. A nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker and a man who speaks with a high-pitched, breathy tone. All right. Nasal smoker, high-pitched, and breathy. Uh, just heard uh, Monica need to verify. Good for us. <laughs> Sound like a leprechaun. Oh, good for us. We did it. 
sounds like a conveyor belt, but starting adds to the noise. Yeah, conveyor belt starting adds to the noise of machinery. You can't make out anything else till it comes to a stop a minute later. Think our next step? Wait, isn't ready to make a move yet. To be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more. Yeah, aesthetic. I'm just going to make him Irish. It's fine if I have to do that voice again. <laughs> More conveyor belts start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, drowning everything else out. A bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut. And the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic. Someone's like butt dialing you. The ringing stops. The nasal woman's can voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Guten Tag. How may I help you? I heard. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What well, do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know, getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the Kreutz Bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know. I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. I want to make out more. Also, if I get even one chance to include some kind of like Mombon character in this, I am all over it. Um, Dante Dota, there was an Irish, there was an Irish bounty hunter in an early episode of uh, Swan Song. It was actually pretty funny. Doing the accent off with wheat is pretty great. The man behind the counter has a broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Turkish street vendor. What does that even mean? <sighs> welcome, honor defend him, welcome, and how can Buragazi serve you today? Would you like a cup of coffee, perhaps? I finished the little trifle, Herr Buragazi. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Not at all. It was very. Good. It was good to take in the night air. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give him the information. Got to pick the long one. Difficulties? No. One of the taps had been modified a bit, though. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. <laughs> of course they were. I would be surprised if they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. In the flux, everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who's in power and who will be in power next? If you're to stay here, offend him. You must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle Tadimir always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. Might be important. Some super annoying NPCs. Oh-ho! Tell me, oh listener at Keyholes, what did you hear on the surveillance tap you found? I couldn't make out much. A nasal woman and a high-pitched leprechaun-type dude. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. The chick's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous you discovered this information, although it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. So in Shadowrun, everyone has a, a day job that's like a big fake day job. And they're all super secret Shadowrun council guys. It's a thing, just a thing, just Shadowrun things. Sounds good, keep me in the loop. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid fire Turkish and the gum chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for Herr Amsel, uncle. Kami holds you, hands you a folded piece of paper Inside is a memory stick. Please extend my consolations to him. The death of Fräulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Brick Ozzy gives Kami a small nod. She hurries out of the room. When she's gone, he returns his attention to you. Please. Express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. Few know how important. Oh, she was a Shadowrunner and, like, a secret important dude. 
The memory stick Kami just handed you should contain the information Hiram still requires from our chef in the field. Chef in the field. <laughs> then you should, if you should require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. Listen, man, I was just going to ask you, good day? I said good day. All right, so let's leave this hookah joint and uh, go home. Okay, so we're gonna go turn in our quest information. Is Effendim, is it related to Effendi, which is like, um, friend? Dietrich, Dante, Iger, Paul Amsel. All right, Amsel. I wonder if he's from Amsterdam. Night sauce. Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get information about Green Winters? Yeah, I spoke to Altug. He gave me his memory stick. Let's see what his agent has to say. Amsel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it into his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flit back and forth. Bregazi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of kids called Drogan Kip. The hotel is called Das Kessel House. <laughs> you have to. It's a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Drogan Kip. It appears that Winters is holed up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of his neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside the hotel, but he confirms he's still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do it! Let's do it now! Come on! Iger slings her rifle over her shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Glory and Dietrich pause, exchange looks with Paul. Just a moment, Iger. Ansel rises from his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You're an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe Night Sass is the right choice to lead the team. Well, it's the first time for everything. There's a long pause before Iger speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. What? Or what, if you prefer. Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered the contributions to the team to be invaluable. Yeah, you're the tank. You're not the face. It's fine. But we all know she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iger speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured, but her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge? Again? She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Night Sass is the reason we're alive, Iger. She kept us together. She let us out of there in one piece. Making your you her, making her your number one girl. <sighs> this is more of your flux state idiocy at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, puts his hand on your shoulder. It's what Monica believed in. <sighs> yeah, and look where that got her. She straightens to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission on survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. Dietrich manages a smile. What can I say? With German, we have a history of strong political views. <sighs> Screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Night Sass, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. If you'd rather she take the lead, I'll abide by that, but I want to hear each of you say it. You already have. You just weren't listening. You stay out of this. She stabs an armored finger into your chest, hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. <sighs> Reflexively, she takes a half step back. I think we've heard what Dante has to say. 
For my part, Knights Ass saved their lives back there. You may not believe it, but she did. The way I see it, that means I follow her lead for a while longer. Glory's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgment. Therefore, I trust Knight Sass's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Amsel speaks softly, but his tone is firm. Knight Sass will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. I'll do whatever it takes to... Mm. Oh my god, I gotta do it. Great. Hey, Iger, could you grab me a soy calf? Do not fuck with me. She looks from Dietrich to Glory to Amsel, finally down at Dante. All right, fine. <sighs> Looks like the rookie's in charge again. We can talk about this more later, Iger. For now, we have more important things to deal with. Iger's expression remains stony. She gives you a small nod. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dante needs a German accent, too. German dog. Grr. Grr, I'm a dog. I've transferred the information that we received from Altuk to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workspace, Knight's ass. Now it's yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Amsel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I will eagerly await your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to Drogon Kip. The roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster. Are we going to take the trends? Europe Express. I hope so. I mean, there's already been a Kraftwerk joke in this game, but... Thanks for the tip, Iger. The U-Bahn it is. No way. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. <sighs> Dietrich leans in to whisper into her ear. She's right, friend. Driving in Berlin is generally a bad idea. So is shooting down a teammate like that, especially in front of the rest of the group. Just a word of advice. Shut up, Dietrich. I do what I want. You now command a team of Shadowrunners. When traveling to new mission locations, you'll be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. They'll be patched up and ready for action the next time you return to your safe house. Avoid this loss of firepower by always carrying some boom -o -na trauma kits into the field. These can be purchased at the Street Doc's office in the Kreutz Bazaar. Cool. I've got shadow runners. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pause once more. We're gonna save our game. Save our game here. Beep boop boop. And uh, we'll take a short break. So run a couple of commercials. Stick around. Pick it back up with more Shadowrun Dragonfall in just a couple of minutes.